Hey everyone, what's up? It's Robbie here, and yeah, welcome back to Open World Games as we talk about more Anthem goodness. We're going to go over a ton of stuff today, including some details about ultimates. We're talking about more details about strongholds, how the mission structure actually works in Anthem. Can you have multiple freelancers, that is the pilots, versus multiple javelins we already know we can have multiple javelins in anthem then we're talking about linear missions and stuff like that but one thing i wanted to talk about was gear mods so let's jump into that first of all a lot of these details are coming from well actually all the details are coming from mark dara of bioware so send your questions to him out on twitter if you want some of your questions answered so let us begin with gear mods so a Sinister says this, awesome, thank you. Can a Colossus and Ranger use the same gear mod or is it Javelin specific for gear? Very good question indeed. And Mark responds saying it is Javelin specific, but he also followed up on this uh, with another answer to another question. He says, gear can also be used across multiple loadouts. So what does that mean? So you have your pilot, of course, your freelancer, then you have your javelins, and then you could have loadouts within a javelin, for example. So you can have different loadouts for one javelin. Say you want multiple types of loadouts for your Colossus javelin, go for it, but there will be specific gear tailored for that javelin, for that Colossus, for example. So it can get pretty detailed, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so some more questions about gear mods and gear. Uh, in the game it says uh, this from I think it's throwaway or something like that the most important question that's been on my mind ever since I saw the storm javelin will it exclusively be lightning electricity or will we be able to change the element of that javelin hmm, good question and the answer is it's going to be based on gear so it sounds like you can go in there and rearrange your gear for the storm javelin or whatever javelin you're in and change that up we'll see what other type of elemental damage we can do of course we've seen like the flamethrower uh from the colossus so we do know that fire is part of it and when i played the game we had like fire going on lightning um, shock damage going on uh, and then even freeze damage so there's a wide variety there okay so let's talk a little bit about the mission structure a little bit more so we do know that you do have your overarching open world which we are seeing right here actually so you can explore that to your heart's content go on side activities do whatever you want then you can like go into the stronghold missions and stuff like that uh, so let's see what the question is here. It says, Ruben X says, will the missions in the game be like stages or path which you have to follow or is the world a huge map where you and your team can approach the objective from all directions? And the response is this, missions are relatively linear within themselves. However, free play is wide open. Uh, so you could see that when you get into like the stronghold missions or even some of the campaign missions it may go into these more linear events to make it more cinematic, which makes a lot of sense to me. I would call though that like the uncharted moments, I guess you would say. Uh, then we have uh, another question about mission structure. It says, couldn't find a question like this on your feed. If I choose to go through the critical path with another player by joining their group, will I have to complete the, the same missions as the host of a group or solo essentially is mission progress only for the host? Great question. And the response is you will complete the mission too. So if uh, you basically play with uh, someone that's basically hosting the match and is considered the leader of that uh, mission and they ask you to help them out, you're basically completing the mission as well if you help them. So no worry there. And uh, you're, you're taking a lot of the stuff back and upgrading your stuff at your stronghold, which is considered the single player experience, by the way. And when you're in your, your I'm sorry, your fort, I should say, I'm going to call that your fort. Don't get strongholds and forts confused because they are two separate things in this game, although they sound kind of similar. So you have your fort that you can go back to or your strider that you can go back to and upgrade your weapons and stuff like that and interactive characters like a single player game. Okay, so this is interesting. Some new details about strongholds. So strongholds will absolutely require four players to actually play the stronghold. So that's super important to remember. They're kind of like Destiny's raids. You're going to need four players. Now, a lot of you guys are like, well, I don't have four friends that are online right now. Well, 
They did state uh, in a follow-up question and answer uh, that you can actually match make the three other players to get to the four cap that you need to engage in a stronghold mission. So that at least is very good news there. But I think the ideal thing is you're going to want to find a looking for group or something like that and find players that are serious about tackling some of these more tougher strongholds. And of course, there's difficulty settings with a lot of this stuff in this game as well. All right, so uh, now there was a really good question. I didn't even consider this. Are strongholds considered part of the campaign path? Can you play them outside the campaign or do you have to like keep going through the campaign to replay strongholds? So very good question here. So Mark Darrow says, not campaign missions, high difficulty experiences. So remember that they're going to be super difficult in their own right. And they're definitely going to be kind of like the in-game content that a lot of us are seeking. Uh, and there's going to be, from what I understand from previous questions as well, a lot of these in-game experiences in the world and with strongholds are going to offer their own loot. So you're going to want to go to this stronghold for this type of loot, apparently, and then check out this area of the map to try to farm this type of loot or that type of loot. So... Uh, that's how the game is going to basically work. Now, some interesting details about your pilot, the guy that's in the suit, also known as the Freelancer or Lancer. Uh, all those terminologies were discussed out on Twitter. There was like a whole funny thread like, are they Lancers, Freelancers? Are there Lancers and Freelancers? No, it's just a short, broad term for Freelancers. So, uh, let's see what chance has to say here he says are we able to make multiple different freelancers if we wish to i'm friends with a family who are going to share a copy of this game two twin boys and a girl they will each want their own freelancer hey i'm a twin i know all about sharing that uh experience for sure sharing consoles games and stuff like that uh so mark dara says yes so there is your answer with that you can have multiple freelancers under one account much like destiny does i guess you would say but uh each freelancer has access to all the javelins so keep that in mind that's the difference between anthem and destiny now uh we did uh learn about uh you know the fact that you can actually free roam in this game to your heart's content that uh, there's not really any type of, uh, you know, system that keeps you glued together no matter what in Anthem. Uh, I remember uh, State of Decay 2 had that problem uh, with tethering. That's what it's called. That's the word I'm looking for. So let's uh, also dive into a little bit about this detail here. Jill says this, in Anthem, when I create a group with friends, will we stay linked together for future missions, even when each of us get back to their own Fort Tarsus? Or... Will we have to recreate a lobby every single time? This is something that I was really concerned about recently. And boom, there's the question. I was like, there it is. I was actually wondering this. And Mark Darrow says, in this case, you will stay linked together. Uh, and again, I guess you can uh, explore the whole world to your heart's content when you are in a server with your friends. And the servers are going to hold up to four people and they said uh, out on twitter mark Dower says they're going to try to have as many servers as they need uh depending on how popular the game is they're just going to keep adding servers for uh you guys and they said that uh they're going to be running virtual servers on physical servers i guess that's the wording uh so it's going to be interesting to see how many servers are going to be required for this game and i'm curious to see how the game actually handles itself during the beta as well so let's talk about ultimates now, uh, we did get to see that in the gameplay demonstration. Are there going to be multiple ultimate moves uh, for one javelin? That's a very good question. So, uh, Brian says, sorry for asking this again, but I didn't get a response first time I asked. I was just curious to know if the ultimates or changeables or changeable or you stuck with me throughout the entire game, depending on which javelin you use. Will you be able to change them out? So the question here is basically, will you be able to change up your ultimate move uh, for your javelin? You know, have a different type of ultimate. And uh, the answer is we won't have changeable ultimates at launch. And to be honest with you, that's kind of a bummer. I was hoping to have like multiple variations for the Colossus or some sort of big moves you can have. But it's good to know. It sounds like here, as he said, keywords at launch. Sounds like they're going to be expanding the arsenal for the javelins or just adding more javelin variations this could work uh, 
a lot like operators in Rainbow Six Siege or even, uh, you know, the specials that we are seeing in Black Ops 4. They could just keep on adding more, more and more heavy types of javelins with their own types of moves and uh, give them certain names like you see the Glosses, which I think would be very cool if we ended up with like uh, over like 20 different types of javelins by the uh, end of the game's life. Who knows if that's going to happen? Uh, but we will see. But yeah, it's kind of disappointing that we won't be seeing multiple ultimates, but there's so many different ways uh, they could take that in the future by adding different javelins again or something like that. But guys, there you have it. Some details about Stronghold's gear, gear mods, all sorts of cool uh, information about how the mission structure will be working in the game. Let me know, guys. What javelin will you be playing as in Anthem? I th I'm really wanting to see more on this Interceptor. It is killing me now. Uh, Mark Dower did confirm out on his Twitter that he will be at PAX West. So that's super exciting. That's going to be August 31st, I think through September, what, 3rd or 4th or something like that. And then we have Gamescom coming up. I don't know if they're going to have uh, too much of a presence at Gamescom, but they're definitely going to be at like PAX West. Uh, so that's really cool. So hopefully we get something there. And I plan to do more content, of course, around PAX West and whatever Anthem news is upcoming. But I do expect the Anthem news to ramp up here as we get into, well, we are in mid-August now. Late August, uh, we should be seeing a lot more Anthem news. I'm crossing my fingers we get some more details about this Interceptor class. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. For more Anthem and open world gaming goodness right here on Open World Games. And I will see you guys later.